السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته الحمد لله رب العالمين صلى الله وسلم وبارك على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم تسليما كثيرة ما ما بعد I'm gonna link إن شاء الله تعالى the last ayah that we heard in the recitation over here with some of the ayat that we started with this evening إن شاء الله عز وجل so if you remember the last ayah that the Imam was reciting or the last couple of ayat the Imam was reciting Allah سبحانه وتعالى says إن الذين قالوا ربنا الله ثم استقاموا فلا خوف عليهم ولا هم يحزنون إن الذين قالوا ربنا الله ثم استقاموا Allah سبحانه وتعالى is like vowing and promising that those who truly say I believe those who truly say we believe ثم استقاموا the meaning of ثم استقاموا it means they remain steadfast which means those who claim that they believe and then what they need to do they need to prove it that's what it means those who say we believe and then they prove it Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says فَلَا خَوْفٌ عَلَيْهِمْ وَلَا هُمْ يَحْزَنُونَ they shall have no fear and no grief when you say no fear and no grief what does that exactly mean? no grief for what? from the past and no fear from what? for the future which means they shall have no grief for what they've, whatever happened in the past because Allah will forgive them that and they shall have no fear of the future because Allah will grant them what? safety and where is that safety jama'ah? in al-jannat al-firdaus Allahumma jannam al-ahl al-jannati ameen now Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that those who truly say we believe and they remain steadfast with their actions now connecting this with something that was, that was recited earlier in this evening inshallah ta'ala is one of the things, one of the main things that takes people away from the path of steadfastness. The previous ayah was speaking about the path of steadfastness, remaining steadfast, remaining you know, firm on that path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There's one thing Allah mentioned in these earlier ayat that could be one of the main reasons for people to not follow that path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Can you guys guess the ayah? Random thought. Surah Al-Zukhruf. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says الْأَخِلَّاءُ يَوْمَئِذٍ بَعْضُهُمْ لِبَعْضٍ عَدُوْ إِلَّا الْمُتَّقِينَ الْأَخِلَّاءُ What's the meaning of الْأَخِلَّاءُ? In the translation of the word أَخِلَّاءُ they say the friends, allies but it's much more than that الْأَخِلَّاءُ جَمْعُ خَلِيلٍ Basically the خَلِيل is the one whose love penetrates your heart absorbed by the heart so basically it's there embedded in the heart someone that you dearly love and you dearly admire you just kind of like very compassionate passionate love for this person Allah says those who have this level of love for each other on the day of judgment they shall be enemies to one another they shall be enemies to one another so just to give you perspective how to visualize that, I don't know if it's a good example or not, but eventually dealing with a lot of marriage counseling things, I can tell you when a husband and wife who once loved each other decide to divorce and split, it turns ugly. In the dunya, things turn ugly for them. Subhanallah, just a few months ago, they were lovey-dovey and they were just, you know, kind of exchanging flowers and chocolates and going and watch the sunset and all that stuff and so on. And now a few months later, Allah al musta'an they're going to court, they want to rip each other off, they want to, Allah Akbar, what happened to them? What happened to their sanity? Suddenly they become adu, like enemies to each other, Allah al musta'an Imagine this is matters of dunya. They become at that level of enmity. They don't want to see each other. Meet me at the court. Don't talk to me. Talk to the lawyer. This and that, Allah al musta'an this is just matters of dunya, jama'ah. Imagine when what's at stake there, is Jannah in Ardu as wal Ard. Imagine when the punishment, punishment now, not child custody or taking the mahar back or not, there's Jahannam. Imagine when this is what they're going to be fighting for. What's going to happen to them? They're going to explicitly show their enmity to another on that day. That's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says at the end of Surah Abasa, what Allah Azza says about the people. When people they run away from who? Their own brother, siblings, your brother and sister. Your father and your mother, your mother and your father. Your spouse and your children. On that day, everybody minding his own business. I don't even know you. It's to that level. 
that people are going to perhaps show enmity towards one another. Again, why? Because on that day, people are going to start blaming whom? Their loved ones. Because it was because of you, I didn't come to the masjid. Because of you, I didn't give my money that, to, to, to the donation of the masjid that night. Because of you, I did not finish memorizing the Quran. Because of you, I did not do this. So basically, every spiritual failure you can think of in this dunya, you're going to throw it on somebody else. You're going to try to blame everybody. It's because of you, your companionship. You ruined my life. You made me do this, you made me do that, which as I usually I hear in, in marriage counseling as well. Because when the husband and wife, they come and everybody is basically, you know, they want to come to reconcile. So why did you divorce her? She made me angry. He never says, I got angry. I didn't have a man yet telling me, I got angry, I divorced her. No, it's always, she made me angry. Or if they say, I got angry, and they say divorce word, and then they blame her, but you know, she started it first. It's always like that, Allah Mustafa. You want to blame other people. Now you can blame as much as you want in this dunya. But when the akhirah comes, trust me, that's not going to help you. It's not going to help you. So if you know that there is something good needs to be done in this dunya, and you're not doing it just to please other people whom you love dearly, or you, you have concern for them, then in this case, you're doing it for the wrong reason. If there is something good needs to be done, and you know that needs to be done, regardless of what that good is, whether it's Qiyamul Layl, coming to the masjid, giving your money, being good to other people, whatever that you do, if you're not doing it just to please other human beings, remember on the Day of Judgment, when Allah asks you, you got the opportunity to do that, you didn't do it, why? You had all the time, all the wealth, all the, time, all the life, all the energy, and you didn't do it, why is that? That's when you remember, الْأَخِلَّاءُ يَوْمَئِذٍ بَعْضُهُمْ لِبَعْضٍ عَدُوٌ إِلَّا الْمُتَّقِينَ That those, love, those who love each other, the best friends in this dunya, might turn enemies against each other on the Day of Judgment. They say in the Arabic language, الصاحب ساحب Your friend basically gravitates. His friendship gravitates. What does that exactly mean? If you're a friend of this person, most likely you're going to share some of the qualities. Most likely you're going to share some of the qualities. And that's why they say also in Arabic, You tell me who are your friends, I'll tell you who you are. I don't have to hear anything about you. Just tell me who your friends are. I can tell you exactly who you, who you, you would be. And also the Prophet وسلم, he said, The example of the good companion and the example of the bad companion are the example of someone who visits a, a, a perfume shop. And the other person is, is visiting a blacksmith. Those who visit the, the perfume shop, the Prophet ﷺ says, You go to a perfume house, what do you get out of there? You get something for free. How is that? Samples. You're not going to buy. You get samples, right? So can I try this? Can I try this? Can I try that? You try everything. And they have sometimes these fancy, beautiful cards. They spray on the car and says, try it. Spray on to give it to you. So by the end of the, of the day, you have, mashallah, a whole uh, stack of these cards in your pocket. You go home and just you kind of sniff them and just enjoy that. For free. You'll be walking in the mall, mashallah. You smell like a, 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 a garden uh, full of flowers, mashallah. So this is for free. The second, amin. No, you go there, you like it, you pay, you get something. So you buy it with your own money. The least, if they didn't give you samples, if you didn't buy anything, what, what do you get out of them? Good smell. When you walk, when you walk through the store, you just say, oh my, this is awesome, this is beautiful. You want to stay longer because it smells really good over here. Before you leave that place. This is the example of the good companionship. How is that? Your friends, good friends, what do they do? They volunteer the advice to you. You don't have to ask them. They know this is good for you, they're going to tell you, you know, this is good for you, this is bad, stay away from that. They will volunteer goodness. They will give you that which is good. They will share that with you. Whether it's generosity, akhlaq, and manners, and so on. Or you buy from them, which means you solicit that from them. You solicit that from them. You ask. So when you say, by the way, do you know how to do this? Can, I, can you help me with that? You ask, and because they're good, guess what? You give it, you take it. You, they give it to you. 
The minimum, if they don't give you anything in, in, for free, you don't get anything because you didn't ask anything, what do you get from them? Good companionship. No harm. You just feel so safe around them. MashaAllah, they are good people, amazing community, alhamdulillah, Rabbi Amin. That's how it is. The second example the Prophet says about these, these people, these friends, he says the example of the blacksmith. He says, Imma an nihriqa thiyabak, wa imma an tajida rihan khabitha. Whether he, will, he, he might burn your clothes, or the least you get is just the smoke and the bad smell. So how is that? Back in the days when they used to use blacksmith and to, to, you know, to iron and work on their swords and, and all the metal and so on, you go there, the sparks of the fireflies all over the space, all over the place, and subhanAllah, ironically, the thobe I'm wearing over here has a hole. And that hole is from a spark from a charcoal. And I remember, well, I still remember the day. It was new. This thobe was absolute. It was the first time I'm wearing it, subhanAllah. And because it was a special occasion, I don't know if it was Eid or Ramadan, whatever activity that is. So I usually use the Bukhur, the burning scent, Vinci. So I use the charcoal. And then I put it, of course, in that thing, to the holder. So I blew so that the smoke, basically, that, that it burns and burns the, the, uh, the, the, the burning scent. Eventually, to, the smell comes out. When I did that, subhanAllah, a spark jumped off and landed on the, on, the, on the sleeve over here and left a mark forever. Every time I go around, people, they, when they see my sleeve, they stop me to, to take it off because they think it's a dirt. I said, no, it's actually it's a hole. Subhanallah, it's always a reminder for me, Wallahi. Every time I see that, I remember that incident and I remember the hadith instantly. So this could be the mark some of your bad friends might leave in your life. But it's not going to be in your thobe anymore. It's going to be on you, in your heart, in your records of deeds. The least bad smell. If you sit with smokers in a room, even if you don't smoke, you're going to smell like a smoker, if not even more. So if you go with bad friends, even if you don't do their bad stuff, guess what? You are going to look like that, or at least the perception about you will sound like that. They say, they say that akhlaq and manners are contagious. Manners are contagious, which means good manners. If you go around people with good manners, chances that you're going to start behaving the same. Why? Because you start picking some of those beautiful manners from them. And if you go around bad, bad friends, then eventually you're going to start behaving in the same fashion. Finally, inshallah ta'ala, I can't yani, uh, speak about friends and friendship without talking about what, jama'ah? Facebook, radiallahu anhu. <laughs> how, can you, how can you speak about friends without bringing Facebook as the greatest example of, unfortunately, failure in social life? Why is that? Because most people now, they have more friends, virtual friends, you know, virtual friends on the internet than real friends in real life. When they talk with people face to face, they have very awkward social skills. But you look at their, mashallah, timeline on Facebook, Tabarak rahman mashallah. They have social intelligence to the top, Tabarak Allah. So remember, even though they're virtual friends, even though they're virtual friends, but that type of, of friendship as well, can be added and included in this whole scenario that we were talking about. Remember, when someone sends you a friend's request, don't say, who is this? Let me check. Accept. Boom. You go to their now uh, uh, timeline, and oh my God, it's bad. But whatever, you know, he's one of many. Move on. You never know what's going to happen. So whenever you have friends, 1,000, 100, 200, because I know specifically the young ones who always, you know, once they start with their Facebook, they brag themselves with what? How many friends they have. That's very bad actually technique. Be careful with that. As sahib sahib. These friends, they gravitate. So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect you from that, Jama'ah. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala surround you with the best friend in this dunya and the, the best friends in the akhirah. Allahumma ameen. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.